Delirium. What is it? It's defined as an acute disturbance of consciousness that fluctuates over time. Patients generally can't receive, process, store or recall information in the same way. It's usually reversible. But remember, if your patient is delirious, it's serious. Delirium lengthens intensive care stays. It worsens long-term cognitive impairment and ultimately increases mortality. Martin is a new patient to the intensive care unit and Jo, our nurse, is about to perform her morning assessment for delirium. Good morning, Martin. My name's Jo, I'm gonna look after you today. Are you feeling okay? Is that a yeah? So how do we know if a patient is delirious? Martin's clearly not delirious, he's calm and he's quiet. Sorry Joe, but that's completely wrong. The only way to assess for delirium is to use the CAM ICU assessment tool. Delirium is found in up to 80% of intensive care patients. And actually, hypoactive delirium is far more common. So, this is the CAM ICU assessment tool. And it may seem daunting at first, but believe me, it's as easy as one and two, three or four. Let's look at each step in more detail. You can use CAM ICU on any patient with a RAS score of more than or equal to minus three. Step one is asking if there has been a change in the patient's baseline. Any patient on ICU will score for this domain. Martin too is definitely not at his baseline, so the answer to step one for him would be yes. This means we move on to step two. Step two is there to assess for inattention. We do this by using a series of letters and asking our patient to squeeze our hand. We can also do this with blinking if required. Okay, Martin, I'm going to read you a, se a sequence of letters and I want you to squeeze my hand every time you hear me say the letter A. Do you understand? Okay, so can I just hold your hand? So don't forget, you're going to squeeze after the letter A. S, A, V, E, A, H, A, A, R, T. Martin has squeezed my hand on numerous occasions and not followed any instruction. So Martin is positive in steps one and two. This means we move on to steps three or four. If Martin had managed to get all the save heart letters correct, he would in fact be CAM ICU negative. Now, step three looks at altered levels of consciousness. All you have to ask is, is the patient's RAS anything other than zero? I actually think that Martin has a RAS of zero. Does that mean he's not delirious? Sorry, Joe, wrong again. At this stage in the algorithm, if Martin had a RAS score of anything other than zero, he would be CAM ICU positive and our assessment would be complete. However, this isn't the case. So we need to look at the last step, step four. This looks at disorganized thinking and uses four yes or no questions and a basic command. Okay, Martin, I'm gonna ask you a few questions, okay? Yeah? Okay, will a stone float on water? Of course they do, love. Are there fish in the sea? No. Does one pound weigh more than two? I don't know. Okay. Can you use a hammer to pound a nail? Uh, no. 
Martin, can you hold up this many fingers? Can you do the same with the other hand? Poor Martin. He's showing signs of steps one and two and four. Step one being a fluctuating level of cognition, step two being an attention, and step four being disorganised to thinking. Remember, one and two, three or four. Therefore, Martin is CAM ICU positive. My patient is CAM ICU positive. I know that if, it's, if he's delirious, it is serious. So what do I do next? Delirium must be addressed. It's time to ask for help. Let your colleagues, both medical and nursing, know. We must start to look for the cause. Delirium is reversible and should be treated like any other organ failure. Remember, CAM ICU can be very helpful to you. It's as easy as one and two, three or four, and it helps us show delirium the door. If your patient is delirious, it's definitely serious.